If you ever wanted to start a YouTube channel from zero with no knowledge around editing or YouTube strategies or no social media following, then this video is for you. I started my YouTube channel from zero in January of 2023. And in the last couple of months, I've reached 1000 subscribers. I've learned a lot over the last 12 months. And today I'm sharing some pieces of wisdom I learned along the way. If you're new here, my name is Carly. I am a represented model in the New York City market. I work in tech as a product manager and on this channel, I I talk about personal finance, I talk about my journey with modeling, and I also share about my lifestyle and how I live a balanced, healthy life. Now going into the learnings I've made around YouTube, my first learning is to do research into your video topics. If you want a rough idea of how well your video will do on YouTube, just go into the YouTube search bar and type in the concept of your idea and hit enter. You can see how other videos of the same concept have done along with their title and thumbnail ideas. You can generally judge the performance of a video concept by comparing the number of views the video has to the number of subscribers the creator has. Sometimes it is harder to tell, especially if it's an older video, because we don't know how many subscribers the creator had back when they posted it. But the general rule of thumb for whether a concept is a decent idea or not is if the video has as many views as the creator has subscribers, or even better, if the video has more views than the creator has subscribers. And sometimes it's a product of a great thumbnail and great title that helps a video do so well. So you have to use discernment too. As part of my research, I like to use a vidIQ plugin that tells me the search volume for a particular topic and also the competition for that topic. For example, if I'm thinking about doing a video on how to save money in 2024, it'll tell me the search volume and also competition for that topic. I generally try to target video concepts where the competition is low, because as you can see, I'm a pretty small channel right now. Because of that, it would be harder for me to compete with a bigger channel that would create a video on the same topic. It's even better if your search volume is high and competition is low. In my experience, that's generally harder to find. The best I can generally find is search volume is medium and competition is relatively lower. I definitely don't do this process for every single video I create, but for topics that I'm diving into for the first time, I think it's generally worth taking a look at the vidIQ plugin. I've learned that not everything has to be completely original. If there was a video topic that I did a couple weeks ago that did really well, then I can make a very similar video with a slight twist. I used to think that each of my videos had to be drastically different, but I came to a few realizations quite recently. Somewhere around 80% of my long form video viewers are not subscribed to my channel. So if I make a video that is similar to my previous videos, given the size of my channel, I can generally safely assume that the majority of people who are watching these videos are coming across my channel for the first time or first few times. If the topic has historically done well for my channel, there's a higher probability that the next video I make on that topic will reach a wider audience. And even if my content is redundant for people who have watched my videos every week, I post once a week and I definitely don't remember anything I watched on YouTube last week. <laughs> Just saying. My second learning is to post consistently. I think it's really hard to grow on YouTube without consistency. I set a schedule of posting once a week, every week on Tuesday. And in the beginning, it was really hard to grow traction. And I think as the algorithm started to understand that I was very consistent with my uploads, then it started pushing my videos out to a wider audience. Not only that, as I started developing my niche and putting out more videos of the same type of content, I think YouTube, the algorithm started to better understand what types of people People would be interested in seeing my videos and then therefore suggesting my videos to them. I have noticed that the times I did take a break from YouTube and I came back, the first couple of videos back, it was hard to gain traction for those videos. Most notably, this was after one three week break I took and then a couple of one week breaks here and there. Other than that, I've been posting quite consistently and I feel like I've been able to capitalize on my growth from that. My next piece of wisdom is to put some monetary investment into this venture. The best way I motivated myself to start putting out videos on a consistent basis from having no experience on YouTube at all was spending a lot of money on my Sony ZV-E10 camera, along with other miscellaneous items that helped me level up from the outset. Overall, it made my creating process just a little bit easier and it made me enjoy the process a little bit more too because I had specific equipment to work with. The biggest expense was this camera, and it's true that I could have started filming on my phone, but it wouldn't have been a like novel experience for me. I knew I would eventually buy a camera anyway because I was so set on taking YouTube seriously. So I decided to hold myself accountable and put in this investment. If I had ever quit, then I knew that I was wasting a thousand dollars on this camera and other miscellaneous subscriptions and items that I'd purchased to help myself get off the ground. If you follow this channel 
channel for a while now, you know that I simply would not have let myself do that because I try to be very intentional with all of my purchases. As the year went on, I could very easily pinpoint what additional purchases could elevate my ease of creating and my elevate my video quality. I eventually purchased an external microphone, so my audio quality got so much better. I purchased a subscription to Final Cut Pro. I also purchased a subscription to Gleam.ai, which is a tool that cuts out my silences and my bad takes. More recently, I bought studio lights so I could film at any time of the day. These items helped not only with my consistency, but also the quality of the videos I release. If you've been with me from the beginning, you can probably see at which specific points I've leveled up with my equipment. My next learning is to push past the discomfort. There's a lot of discomfort with starting a YouTube channel. There's the discomfort of putting yourself out there, the discomfort of potentially failing while people are watching you. There's also the discomfort of negative comments and feedback. But people say that the most growth happens when you push yourself out of your comfort zone. I think this is true, especially if you're creating a channel with your face on it or with your identity connected to this channel. Many people have told me that they feel camera shy or they feel awkward in front of the camera. But I promise you, this is a skill that develops over time. I feel and I think I look so much more natural talking to the camera now compared to when I first started. And honestly, that's to be expected. It's a skill I'm continuing to develop and I'm sure that I will get even better at this over time the more I do this. Once you get going, it's a lot less scary. Creating and posting a video a week is now the norm for me. I'm just doing my own thing. I know what my ultimate goals are. I know why I'm pursuing this. Until that changes, I won't let the fear of judgment stop me from trying to reach my goals. So if you're starting your YouTube channel from zero this year, it's daunting, but you can do it. Don't forget to do proper research into your video topics. Set a schedule you know you can stick to and post consistently. Put some monetary investment into this venture and push past that discomfort. If you keep doing this consistently in one year, I think you will be pleasantly surprised where you are at the end of that year. This could look like growth in your metrics, the people you meet, you never know and you might be surprised. If you watched all the way here, you should definitely like this video and you should subscribe to this channel because I make these videos all the time. And you should check out this video on my one year reflection on YouTube where I talk about how I reached 1000 subscribers.